The funny thing about mythical creatures is that for thousands of years now, humans have brought these beasts to life through different stories, songs and works of art. From a fire-breathing dragon to a soaring phoenix gliding through the clouds. My favourites are the stories of the Bigfoot. Tales of a giant hairy creature that appears to be half man and half ape have been told across the globe for thousands of years. Some people claim they've cited the legend. Different versions of Bigfoot range from a kind, gentle giant that does nothing more than steal fish from the nets of fishermen, to a dangerous, man-eating monster that stalks humans from icy mountain peaks. These tales are so ancient and so global, it makes one wonder if there must be some kind of truth to them. What if I was to tell you that such a creature exists? Yes, I know it may seem crazy, but it's true all the same. While people tend to refer to the creature as Bigfoot, or in some cases a Sasquatch, I'll have you know that the actual term for the species is a giant Wolpertinger. This is a story about a giant Wolpertinger who lives deep in a great forest. This particular giant Wolpertinger is nine feet tall and is covered with bright brown fur. Its hands are so big they look like frying pans, large with wide and stubby fingers and its shoulders are as wide as a barn door. The giant Wolpertinger has long arms you could swing from and as for the feet, they are absolutely, extraordinarily, unbelievably huge. Like giant brown furry trees. I always thought I had big feet. In fact, my shoe size is size 13. But compared to the giant Wolpertinkers, my feet would look quite tiny. This giant Wolpertinger was male and lived in the forest for many years. He spoke some English, but still found it difficult. Obviously, he never went to school. Can you imagine having a giant Wolpertinger in your class? I bet not. Can you imagine one sitting at a tiny desk or trying to fit on a small school chair? Of course not. Incredibly, while living alone in the forest, this giant Wolpertinger actually taught himself English by collecting bits of litter people dropped while they were hiking or camping. The giant Wolpertinger was always delighted whenever he found any new bits of litter or bits of paper floating around, especially newspaper articles. He read and studied them as if they were books. He loved to read. As a matter of fact, he named himself after a piece of litter he had found and read in the forest. He rather liked the sound of the word on it, which was Rolo.